working on the 350, the Vortec 350 for the 85C10. And I wanted to take a minute to talk about Quench. Q-U-E-N-C-H. Quench. What it is, why you, can, why you should be concerned about it, and how you can check it. So, Quench, I kind of think of it as in squish. Uh, if you think Quench, just associate that word with squish. And I'll explain what I mean by that. I mean, I'm sure that's not correct technically, but helps me remember what it is. So if you think about it, you know, as your piston is riding up, you know, it's compressing air. Well, it's compressed over the whole distance of this piston, you know, the whole surface area of this piston. When it comes up, you've got a spark plug that's about right here. It may be a little bit closer to the center, but it's not quite centered. Normally, it's around right here. And so this is where your combustion is going to start. And then if you think of your head, your head itself, of course not on a closed chamber head, um, or a, anything that's not an open chamber, I guess. This part of the head is going to be flat. Just imagine your head sitting here, and it's going to it's going to block off part of that piston. So your combustion area technically is right in here. Well, there's a space between the head and the piston. And that's your quench. And the way I, and why I say squish is because as your piston's going up, you want that air that's right here to get squished and pushed out towards the combustion area. And that's your quench. So you want, I think, I'm trying to remember off the top of my head, I think it's between 40 and 65 thousandths is kind of optimal. Maybe it's 62, I can't remember. I'll, I'll put a, I'll write it in here in the video. But that's about what you want. Now, what you get is with a lot of aftermarket pistons, they are, they're, tech, they're like rebuilder pistons. So what they do, they don't want to sell you pistons that you put in your car, you know, and you've had 20 thousandths taken off the deck to flatten it out. You throw those in your vehicle, and now you've got too much compression or you smack a piston up against the head. So they take off of the deck height, the compression height of the piston. And so basically the wrist pin is higher up on the piston than stock. And so it makes the piston head, the top of the piston, lower in the block at full extension. You know, at, at top dead center, it's sitting lower than it was stock pistons. Now that's a problem because that takes away, it makes your quench area larger. And so a lot of these pistons are like 20 thousandths and I mean, it, it really messes with your, uh, that quench. Now, the reason quench is important is because it's going to, it's just, it's optimal for combustion. It, it pushes that stuff, pushes that compression into the combustion chamber, and combustion happens where it should be, not, not over here, you know, where it's closed. It, you want your combustion happening in the combustion chamber. So, you know, I'm not a expert on this. I'm trying to explain it from what I know. So, when you when you don't have that, you know, you lose power, you lose fuel economy, you're also more prone for detonation. So, if you have that between 40 and 65 thousandths quench, you can run more compression ratio, you can run more timing without detonation than you could, you know, if you had 75 thousandths quench area here. Now, these are not optimal pistons for quench, for optimal quench. Now, 
I'm running these because it's the best I could get without spending $400 on pistons. Now, ideally, you know, flat tops are great for quench. Um, that pushed my compression ratio too high with the Vortex. Uh, I'm running a carburetor on this. I did not want to fight with detonation and all that. So I wanted dish pistons. The best piston, if you're going to run dished, best you could do um, for optimal quench is a D-shaped piston, which basically up here where your uh, cylinder head is closed, uh, it's flat top here, and then it's dished down here in the combustion area. That's the best best piston for a dished. Uh, these um, are a little better than stock. They've got a little bit more surface area right here to push that over here. Um, they're better than most of the rebuilder ones I saw that kind of curved off towards the rings. Um, these are pretty much flat and they've got a little bit more surface area here than the stock ones did. So it's at least going to be better than it was stock. Now these are, they're not as bad as most rebuilder pistons but they are um, lower deck height or compression height. And so we're going to have to account for that. Now I think these were, I think they're only five thousandths, I'm trying to remember, it may have been ten. I don't remember the specs on them. They're H815 DCP pistons. So take a quick look at the heads. You can see what I'm talking about. So this is your quench area here. This, um, and then of course your combustion chamber. And these are Vortec heads. So on a D-dished piston, uh, the dish makes a D shape. Just like that. So it's flat top here dished here so you get optimal quench here now the pistons we have they're full dished so you're only going to have a quench area that comes along you know half an inch around so it's not optimal but it matches it's a little bit better than the factory pistons so and i didn't have to spend 500 dollars or more on pistons so that's where we stand so hopefully that makes sense. We're going to get this block decked, so we need to see what we need to do to get optimal quench. Now we're also going to have to figure out what kind of head gasket we're going to run. That also play when I say that 45 to or 40 to 65 thousandths, that's including the thickness of your head gasket. Now your normal kind of rebuilder type, thicker, uh, not just a thin metal gasket, uh, your composite, normal thickness of a composite gasket is about 40, I think it's about 41 thousandths. And so if you had zero deck height with one of those uh, gaskets, you know, that would be optimal quench. Now, I need to see what my kit came with. I don't know if I want to take that much off of it. I may go with like a 28, 28 thousandths gasket and then take off whatever I need to uh, otherwise. So, what we've got, there, there's a couple different ways you can check this. So you want to make sure your piston's at top dead center. And to me, best way to do that, you can get a micrometer like this. This is just a Mighty Mag um, magnet, so it's stuck to the block here. Uh, you want to check your quench uh, right in the center of the piston uh, because your piston's going to have a tendency to rock. But right here where the wrist pin is, you know, it's not going to do that. So I'm right dead center of the piston. You know, this is going this way, not here, but over here. This is not a dished part of the piston or anything. This is the same height as over here. Now, what I did is I, I slid my magnet over to the block and I checked and zeroed out my micrometer. And so now I just slid it over here and then, you know, I rotated the engine to where, that's why I like the micrometer, to where I can check the micrometer, you know, I can see it. And I can see when it exactly gets to top dead center. And that's what we've got now. And so we're actually reading backwards on the micrometer. But we've got, um, you know, uh, 10, 20, 
30, 40, 45, 46 thousandths is what we're at right now. So right now, if I ran that gasket that I've got in there, we would be talking about like 87 thousandths way off. Now, um, what we have to decide is how we want to address this. Do we want to take off 40 thousandths or 30 thousandths from this block or do we want to run, do we want to take off 20 thousandths and maybe run a thinner gasket? And that would put us back where we need to be. So I'm going to have to make that decision and I'll kind of, I'm, I need to write my numbers down and kind of do a little math and figure out what's best, but I don't, I don't want to take 40 thousandths off this block. Um, we're probably going to take 20 thousandths and, you know, that'll put us at uh, 20, if we take 20, if we take 20 thousandths off, that's going to put us right at, you know, about a, a 26 thousandths, and then if we run a, a 28, you know, we'll be right in where we want to be. So probably what we're going to do, I'll probably have to order a new head gasket and not use the one that came with my kit. But I need to also check my head to make sure it's completely flat. All right, so I've got uh, five pistons in it. And the reason I threw five in it, is we had a little anomaly on this cylinder. And what I realized was once I locked down that rod, I couldn't rotate the engine. And, um, and so I think that... Um, and when I, I pulled the cap off, and we've got a little little mark on the um, bearing where it um, cranked, put a little mark on it on the cap side of the bearing. I think there's a little nick or something on the crankshaft I need to look at, and uh, I can take that off. But uh, I think it, it was causing the bearing to get, or the rod to get sucked down in the top of the, the top part of the bearing that fits in the rod you know, was super tight on the crankshaft because of that spot on the bottom. And so it sucked it down just a little bit more. But we've got um, 41, basically. Um, so I think what we're gonna do, I'm gonna see if they'll do it 25 thousandths. I don't know if they, if we have to go 20 thousandths or if they can do 25. If we can do 25, we'll do 25. And right at, since we're right at 41, we take down um, 25 that'll put us at 16 and if we run a 28 thousandths gasket that's gonna put us at like at 44 so that's gonna be right there where we want to be uh, if they only do 20 I mean that'll put us at 48 I mean we're still decent but the closer we can get to that around 43 thousandths the better so I think we're gonna try to stick right with 25 thousandths if they can, and then that 28 thousandths gasket, uh, I think will do great. So I'm gonna go ahead and strip this thing back down. I gotta pull the crankshaft out and see what's going on right here. Um, but yeah, everything, every, every other cylinder measured 41. Uh, I didn't throw I just threw the ends in. They measured the same. We should be, uh, we should be good. I did check the block cross with the straight edge. It is flat um, all the way across, and so our readings should be the same across all the cylinders. So uh, I think we're good there, and you know that'll get rid of stuff like that. Um, I'm gonna check the head and make sure it's flat, but I think we'll be good. Uh, Uh, but I will check it. So, uh, let me strip this down. Uh, hopefully this helps you out with quench, what it is, how to check it. Um, you know, it doesn't seem like that much would make a difference, you know, just a 20 thousandths or so, but it, it does. So, uh, we're going to make sure this one's right when we go back together with it. We want this to be a good running engine, especially since I bought pistons. Uh, they charge $100 to deck the block at the machine shop I go at, so, or the machine shop I go to. Um, 
so in the scheme of things, a hundred bucks to get this thing right is well worth it. Uh, that gives us a good, even though this thing is flat and we checked it, you know, it will clean up around all these uh, coolant passageways where you got a little bit of staining. There's not really any pitting, mostly staining, but it'll clean all that up and, you know, we'll ensure that we have a good surface and this thing should last for quite a while. So I plan on keeping the truck for a long time. So we want to make sure the engine's good for a long time as well. So thanks for watching. Leave a comment down below, hit the like button and subscribe for more. Yeah. Uh, there's gonna be a lot of videos on this so hit that subscribe button and follow along and uh, eventually we'll have this thing in the truck and running and driving